So Philippa Luz is uh, Portuguese. She's uh, just about to finish her PhD, supervised by Antonio Mateos at the University of Lisbon, uh, and has been working on a joint project with uh, mineral exploration uh, in Portugal, developing metallogenetic and exploration models for volcano sedimentary uh, hosted massive sulfide deposits in the Iberian pyrite belt. Uh, today, she's going to talk about metapelite geochemistry and how we can use that for exploration vectoring in these terrains. So, Philippa, uh, the next 50 minutes yeah. or so are, are yours. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. First, um, I would like to thank uh, to the OR Deposit Hub for this opportunity to share my research with the community. Uh, briefly, Tom said uh, uh, a, thing, a few things about me, but uh, a bit about my background. I finished my master in 2011 in economic geology. And in 2013, I started as exploration geologist in a mineral exploration project between a Portuguese company and university. I did field work, mapping, logging, geochemistry, etc. Um, these pictures illustrate a bit about my um, day work. And during this partnership, provide the question of my PhD. Uh, in 2016, I started my PhD, which is in the end by now. And this four year um, PhD allowed me to collaborate with five companies working in mining and exploration sector in Portugal. So the Iberian Pirate Belt was a subject of a variety and a great amount of multidisciplinary studies, which contribute to discoveries along the time. However, the majority of these studies focus on volcanics and ores, and few about the metasedimentary sequences. So the main goal of my PhD is to characterize the metasedimentary sequences in the IPB using mineral chemistry, old rock, old rock chemistry, and isotope geochemistry. Try to answer some questions, questions like provenances, sedimentary environments, and others, but focusing in finding mineralogical and geochemical guides in mineral exploration. So the Iberian Pirate Belt is located in the southern Iberia, Iberia and extends from Porto Bay, the stratigraphy, from bottom to top, the Iberian Pirate Belt comprise the Philid of Wurtzbite group, known as the PQ, the Volcano Sedimentary Complex, the VSC, that had three levels, lower, middle, and upper, and overlying this, the Baixolentej fish group. As you can see here, the sedimentary lithotypes vary along the sequence, and there are some of these lithotypes that characterize each unit. The volcanism is bimodal, and these volcanic piles have a wide range of ages and different fossils. The massive sulfides um, are frequently hosted in the um, VSC, either in shale or volcanic, and its uh, genesis seems to be confined to the Strunian times, around 360 million years, despite younger occurrences are known, like for example here, the Algestrel mine. This section experienced heterogeneous strain accommodation and low grade metamorphism. The sampling campaign performed 264 samples, considering different criteria. The first one, a spatial criteria, we tried to cover all the Portuguese sector the active mines, the exploration drills, old mines, and even regional outcrops. The second one, the stratigraphic criteria that we try to cover lateral and vertical variation on this sequence. And uh, when it's possible, we take attention to the position of the samples in relation with the massive sulfide or body. If the sample is in the hanging wall, foot wall, or even in the distal foot wall position. The third criteria was considering the sulfide abundance. So the first one, no sulfide are visible at a macro and micro scale. The second one, a pirate bearing, where the pirate is mainly framboidal to partially recrystallize. This is interpreted as mainly diagenetic and sometimes could be followed by sphalerite. And the third one, the mineral light, where we can find the common sulfides on the Iberian pirate belt, like chalcopyrite, sphalerite, galena, pyrite, and some other phases with cobalt, arsenic, and nickel. So, the main features of this metapolite are expressed in these photos. They essentially are composed by fine-grained 
white mica, more or less fluoride in quartz, and other accessory minerals like zircon, rutile, apatite. They are variably rich in organic matter. Some of these metapolites present volcanic device components, as you can see here on the right, uh, an example of um, albite crystal. But frequently, as you can uh, check in these compositional maps, these albites are being sericitized. So, the geochemical fingerprint could be evaluated to a major and minor trace element variation. However, the, sorry, the major elements in these Iberian pirate belts are quite similar. Um, however, if we take attention to the sulfide abundance and major elements, it is possi possible to see that mineralized samples present higher median values for iron, silica, manganese, and magnesium. These ones that you can see here in the black border. On the contrary, non-mineralized samples present higher median values for aluminum, sodium, and calcium. The abundances of minor and trace elements could be easier evaluated normalizing to a pattern. In this case, we normalized to the North American shale composition, but I tested two with the average shale, and the pattern is the same. What we notice here was a systematic anomaly in arsenic and antimonium that increased towards mineralized samples. These increments could rise up 1,000 times and are coupled, coupled with 10 times to 500 times in base metals like copper, zinc, and lead, and sometimes in cobalt and nickel. As you can see here, if you consider the samples from the ore horizon and foot wall and ging wall positions, it seems like the elements like arsenic, antimonium, and these base metals reflect the proximity to massive sulfide. For the rare earth uh, element, the pattern is more discrete. You can see almost flat patterns with the general negative European anomalies. And the most notable feature here is the positive anomaly in the foot wall samples from the Nerds group. The potential geochemical, geochemical indicators that I mentioned before were gathered into a graph and always ratioed with the nanobile elements for this data set. So the anomalies evidenced by the normalized pattern that I showed you before seems to discriminate the barren from the altered mineralized sedimentary sequence. This data allowed to build uh, this graph and these fields that characterize the position of the sample. On the right, you can see a simplified section from the Nevsh curve, from one of the Nevsh curve or bodies. So we are going through the graph and I will show you some picture that illustrate uh, the features. Here you have a sample that are um, uh, in the PK, in a foot wall uh, distal position to the massive sulfide, with no sulfide at the macro or micro scale. Here you can see an example from a um, hanging wall position, where you can see some of framboidal pyrite with some sphalerite associated. Going further to mineralized samples immediately below the massive sulfide or body, you can see some stock work features with quartz, more or less carbonate and sulfide, like pyrite, chocopyrite, sphalerite, and stenite. And finally, a mineralized sample from the Lombardor body, shale osset, where you can see the higher ratios in the base metals and in arsenic and antimony. Sometimes you can find some of these phases like cobalt. The isotopic data was used to constrain the source of sediments, metal sources, and help to vector the massive sulfide. From the 264 samples analyzed in all rock chemistry, we selected 98 for lead, strontium, and neodymium studies. So here you can see the neodymium and strontium data. On the right, the whole data set, and on the left, the data split by stratigraphic units. And it's clear the difference. If we simplify, what we can see is that the bottom units present higher 87, 86 strontium values that are more radiogenic and almost no increment in the epsilon neodymium, low epsilon neodymium values. On the other hand, the upper units almost no changes in 87, 86 strontium, but present um, increments in the epsilon neodymium. So the main to take home message here is it seems that no difference observed due to the sulfide abundance. And 
the strontium iodine um, isotopic data seems to reflect the influence of primary components, either siliciclastic or volcanic derived. Gathering the literature data with my data set, we can say that the PQ and VS sediments are chemically alike and derive from an old continental source. Bottom units present low epsilon iodine values that could reach minus 11, and it expands the literature field for these bottom units. The increment in the epsilon iodine up to zero reflects the incorporation of volcanic derived components that are typically from these upper units. For strontium isotope, the bottom units present um, more radiogenic values than the upper units. If you look to this graph, you can see that the samples are a bit scattered between this star that represents the sea water in the Devonian Carboniferous transition and these two main reservoirs, the siliciclastic PQ and the volcanic VS. So we believe that this transfer could be um, related with the mixing and homogenization between the sea water dominated hydrothermal fluids and these two crustal reservoirs. The TDM ages using neodymium data are similar in the bottom but differ for upper units. These three samples that you are seeing here in red are older, older and laterally equivalent to the PQ and present TDM ages similar to the metal sediments from Meguma. This suggests that a similar source could have supplied the South Portuguese zone continental platform in the Devonian time. These bottom units seems to derive the dismantling of old metal sediments. The TDM ages for the upper VS tend to be younger, and this could be explained by a sporadic contribution of crystal sources like Avalonia. However, our field observation, spectrographic information, geochemistry, um, points that this should be related with the volcanic input. For the metal sources, um, we use the lead isotopes. On the first uh, analysis, we split the 207-206 lead isotope according with the, their lead content. The first group that, that you can see here in this uh, blue uh, square are the samples that con um, had lead contents below 10 ppm. And these are the same samples that present a more radiogenic character. As you can see here, the higher values for 206 and 207. If we cross this information with a common redox proxy like the run it's clear that um, these low lead samples present low uranium thorium ratios, but higher uh, uranium lead and thorium lead ratios. This together, the isotopic and geochemical information points to the lead loss that when we cross with the um, um, normalized pattern, we see on these samples that they present metal depletion like pepper and zinc. So all that is, this information suggests that this group of samples could reflect the lead leaching during diogenic or even hydrothermal alteration. The other group and where the majority of samples are, they present high lead content, uh, frequently above 10 ppm. And as you can see here, apparently almost no variations in isotopic ratios. Again, if we cross uh, uh, with the redox proxies, we can see two groups. The group two, where you have high uranium-thorium ratios that are comparable to suboxic to anoxic environment and vary from 0.5 to 4.5. And here we can say that the incorporation of lead into sulfides should occur immediately below the water, water sediment interface. And this small enrichment in uranium and lead should be related with depositional processes and the reducing conditions. The other group with low uranium thorium ratios, usually below 0.5, might not reflect the positional conditions, and the lead and uranium enrichment could be related with other thermal fluid influxes. So this point, this plot contains our data set with the initial initial data for 206 and 207 isotopic composition. The data from literature for PQ and VS on these shapes. Um, the Portuguese and Spanish ore, as you can see here, a big difference. And this is how arrows represent your trends for the NEVS score. As you can see here on the left graph, uh, the non mineralized samples are a bit scattered, 
but they overlap the PK uh, and the VS fields from the literature. On the other hand, these uh, mineralized samples are frequently clustered by uh, nearby the lead lead compositions for the Iberian pirate belt ores. Uh, this dispersion, we uh, believe that could be related with the overlap of different imprints, the diagenetic, the hydrothermal, or even the late hydrothermal events fault related. On the way to vector, we can use the base metal ratio previously defined and crossed, for example, with 207 as a topic on composition. And here we can see that mineralized samples, this one with a black border, seems to present a co-positive relationship between this geochemical ratio and isotopic ratio. And, sh and this should record the fingerprint related with ore forming system. The upper VS, this, this one, this triangle a bit scattered, again, we believe that reflect the minor imprints of hydrothermal mineralization over sedimentary or diagenetic features, or even the regular, uh, represent the regular character of the mineralization. So for more details, you can write me, and now I'm looking for your questions and feedback. And I would like to thank all the companies that uh, allow me to do this work. Thank you.